I'm Cole Wiley, co-founder at Scandi. Just over a year ago today, we brought you the first demo of 3D scanning on an iPhone 10. Since then, we put that technology into our app called Scandi Pro. Today, we're here to demonstrate a new technology, volumetric video. If you've seen a hologram before, or volumetric video, it was probably made in a professional studio with dozens of cameras, an army of digital artists, and hundreds of hours of media processing. What you're seeing now is recorded on just an iPhone 10 and Scandi Core, our patented middleware. This volume is streamed to augmented reality, Apple's AR kit, over Wi-Fi. The image you see on the iPad is coming from a volume that is then converted into a full mesh so it's not just a point cloud. Why use a mesh and not just a point cloud? Well, it turns out having a mesh skin on an object makes it a lot easier to work with, especially when you have a physics engine. Yeah, that's, that's an important question to address right now. There's a lot of other R's going on. So, uh, you know, I think that between companies like HoloLens and Magic Leave that are producing these amazing headsets that let you enter the, enter the mixed reality or the uh, kind of XR world like never before, and then companies like 60AI and Spatial that are really trying to do more of a software approach that lets you have a shared experience across all of the devices, all of those platforms uh, are really focused on world mapping and creating spaces, you know, letting you map your office, your living room, the grocery store, you know, the downtown city blocks that you operate in. And that's obviously super crucial and why they're interested in it. But we've always been kind of focused on objects and people and doing really tight, detailed scans of uh, hands and faces and shoes and things in your everyday life. And so we see that being a really crucial piece for the, the mixed reality future, the augmented reality future that we're going to be operating in. So a mesh makes things a lot easier to work with whenever you're in a 3D environment. It's kind of like looking at a body and wondering why the skin is so important. Technically, muscles and bones are, you know, a big part of what makes you a human, but the skin is kind of what lets you interact with the world more fluidly. Another thing to think about is atoms making up the surface of a table. That's a really complicated for your, thing for your mind to get around. But if you see the surface of a table, you can very easily understand that's a hard object. It's pretty similar with a physics engine. If a physics engine has to calculate every single point or atom that it would interact with, it's a ton of calculations. But if it knows that there are a hundred points and there's all of these faces, triangles between them that are all pointing up a normal, it's a lot faster. And that's what a mesh gives you. So the holes in the mesh are coming from the fact that we're trying to have really good performance running live. This isn't pre-recorded. We're not sending it to a render farm. We're not doing anything above and beyond what we're capable of doing on an iPhone 10 off the bat. So we want to get rid of all of the holes and we know how to. We just can't run at 30 frames a second without holes right now. So if you want to do a pre-recorded file, we can fix the holes immediately. And if you want to give us another month or two to kind of improve all of the performance issues that we're seeing from having a completely perfectly formed volume, the holes will be gone. We're targeting to have the first version in the wild in January. Uh, people that are licensing Scandi Core, you know, get the advantage of every time we release an update, they can take advantage of the new features that come in that update. So we hope to have the first version ready for our Scandi Core licensees in January, and then have a version in an app. We don't know what that app will be yet, but have a version in an app that lets people around the world download and create and send and share and enjoy volumetric videos uh, at the same time. So right now we're creating a proprietary file format that's basically just a stream of meshes coming into ARKit that we've specially encoded to be high performance ARKit frames. So right now it's really simple. You just get an ARKit frame and we create the SceneKit geometry. So if you're an iOS developer and you've ever worked with SceneKit, what you're seeing on the iPad right now is a scene node. 
and it's a scene geometry with scene geometry sources and scene geometry elements. So this is all a bunch of triangles and there's a texture map on top of it, which is why my face looks so pretty in this video. So there's two ways to accomplish that. One is by doing a scan with the phone. So basically the way that works is it's similar to taking a regular 3D scan. You would go around the person, and then as you move around, we would capture more of that volume and store it, and then only update the area that the camera is actually looking at. And we've been working on that, and again, it comes to a performance problem. We're not ready to stream that live right now. Working on it, not ready to go full bore. The other solution is to use two or more iPhone 10s. So if you check out this video, please help me out editing team. We have a demo showing collaborative scanning, which is taking two iPhone 10s and using them to scan together. So one phone is sending the data to the first phone and then they can make the mesh together and you scan twice as fast. It works really great, it's super fun. So that's a really nice way to take a volumetric video without having to worry about you know capturing the whole scene and it just works really nice. You have two of them set up. Uh, we're working on that as well right now. And so, you know, we've got a big list of things we wanna get done, but the, the first and foremost is making sure that this single phone experience is gonna work really well. That's actually an easy one. So we've been doing 3D scanning since about 2015 ourselves and had been working in the 3D scanning space since we were founded in 2014. So we've been enthralled with 3D scanning, just like what it unlocks, what it enables. The 3D printing side has always been an exciting thing. Uh, and now with you know, AR, VR becoming way more accessible, way more popular, um, 3D scanning seems more pertinent than ever. But what we've found through our years of experience is that 3D scanning is always going to be for a certain subset of people. 3D scanning is hard inherently. Uh, you have to have tracking, you have to, you know, if you wanna get really high detail, you have to take your time. It's an art, it takes a lot of practice. So we wanted to kind of address a bigger market and find, you know, people that weren't necessarily going to be wanting to do 3D scanning, but they wanted to enjoy 3D content in some way. And volumetric video is a great way to do that because it's a video. Everyone uses video all the time. We, you know, have video chats nonstop. People will get an iPad just to be able to do a FaceTime hangout with their grandparents. You know, we want to be able to do that kind of engagement, that kind of experience that anyone can pick it up and use our technology. So volumetric video makes all the sense in the world now because you have an iPhone 10 where, you know, hundreds of millions of people have access to the creation side. And then anyone that has an iPhone 6S or later can pick up the other side of the device and watch the volumetric video in their living room. And we think the use cases for it are really, really unlimited. <laughs>